Hello folks, Mobile T here once again uh, with JoeAnybody.com. I'm down here on another street news report. Uh, we are at the Vancouver Hilton uh, Convention Center where uh, Postmaster General Patrick Donahue is uh, inside the building talking to citizens and uh, speaking at the moment. It's a little after 9 a.m. We are down here covering this in solidarity and the people out here who are protesting are hoping that they can get the message across to Patrick Donahue not to make any more cuts to the postal services. Because really, uh, he and all the workers in the Postal Service, basically all Americans are being held hostage by a Congress that does not want to admit that they are taxing the U.S. Postal Service to death and are destroying an American institution that's been around since before we had the Declaration of Independence. That's the real crime here. I think that, that Postmaster Donahoe, uh, his hands are tied by Congress. and. He needs to hear from the American people that we don't want to go to five-day delivery, that we expect to get mail six days a week, and that we want to keep every post office in America open, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was especially interesting to hear Patrick Donahoe talk about the crisis in confidence uh, surrounding the U.S. post office, because I don't think anybody has created more of that crisis than Patrick Donahoe himself. Yeah. Going out in front of the American people and to tell them that we're broke and that we're, we're, we're about to go out of business, and nothing could be further from the truth. The fact of the matter is, is that the post office isn't broke, we're not going out of business, we're not asking for a bailout. Congress created this problem when they created this five and a half billion dollar pre-funding mandate, and Congress can solve that by passing legislation, important legislation, especially the bill by Oregon's own Congressman Peter DeFazio, H.R. 3591, which would give us the tools to move into the 21st century and continue to come to your house six days a week. And the last thing that everybody needs to know is that this is not a red post office, okay? It's not owned by Patrick Donahoe. It's not owned by the Republicans, it's not owned by the Democrats, it's not a red post office, it's not a blue post office, it's a red, white, and blue post office. It belongs to all of you, and thank you for getting out here. I think he heard your message in there, and I appreciate everybody showing up today. Thank you. Better. Hello, my name is John Schweibert. I'm a retired United Methodist minister, and I got interested in this whole uh, post office situation 
when I was invited to serve on a workers' rights board where we listened to uh, post office employees talking about the difficulties that they were dealing with and the, the difficulties they were uh, experiencing being heard about what's going on in the Postal Service. And uh, so I've been a part of, of, of the uh, community and Postal Workers United activities since that time. I was, uh, because I've been doing a nonprofit mailings for the last 40 years, I felt like I belonged inside today, and I was inside and participating in that, and I plan to uh, be a part of some of the other activities of the day as well. One of the things that we did inside was to uh, set these, this message on the tables, and people are reading them. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it begins, Mr. Donahoe, we object. We say no to your ordering of massive closures and cuts and so on. And uh, so at least I think we uh, did an important thing in saying no. That's something that all Americans in a democracy have to learn, when to say yes and when to say no. So perhaps we have provided um, an opportunity to declare our lack of agreement with the things that are going on. Uh, now, he did acknowledge that there is a robust uh, conversation going on. I think he may have used those terms, robust conversation. He knows we're out here. And uh, he's paying attention. And we just need to keep that up. There's no stopping. It's, the post office is the bedrock of democracy, and we need to keep it that way. And so I'm proud to be a part of uh, what we're all doing. Uh, me today on the inside, but other times I'll be on the outside. And uh, I look forward to seeing you again at the next opportunity. Uh, hi, I'm Margaret Butler. I'm the director of Portland Jobs with Justice. With, yay! Which is a coalition of 92 unions and community groups united in a campaign for workers' rights. And I want to say, we work on lots of campaigns, and this uh, campaign by um, the Congress and the Postmaster General is part of a broader, broader swathe of things going on in our society, which is really designed to weaken and destroy the public sector and weaken and destroy collective bargaining. And everyone who can tell that there's a real problem going on we, uh, John mentioned the Workers' Rights Board hearing that we did in February of 2011. Well, we didn't just hear from workers and their horrible situation that they're faced with. We also heard from customers. And closing um, mail processing facilities and uh, going to five-day delivery would hurt lots and lots of senior citizens and lots of postal customers. There are a few things that our society has decided should be universal and accessible to everyone, like public schools and firefighting and the Postal Service. There's a reason why the Postal Service is enshrined in the Constitution, and we should say no and stand up as loudly and as long as it takes to fight back and save our public postal service. Thanks. Mike, did you, Mike, please, did you have someone else? No. All right, all right. So it's my turn. Oh, I don't know if this is going to work. Yeah. Does that work? Yeah, turn that one on. Okay. Here, how about... How about if we hold this? Okay. All right. I'm, I'm Jamie Partridge, and I'm an organizer with, I'm a, I'm a retired <coughs> mail carrier, and an organizer with the Communities and Postal Workers United, which is a national grassroots network of coalitions of postal workers and customers, community people, <coughs> that are bound and determined to stop the closures and cuts yeah. in the Postal Service. Yeah. As Kevin said, the Postal Service is not broke. If it weren't for the pre-funding mandate that Congress imposed six years ago, where 10% of the postal budget goes to pre-fund retiree health benefits 75 years in advance, the Postal Service would be just about breaking even. 
10% of the postal budget goes to pre-fund retiree health benefits for people who aren't even born yet. No other agency has to do this. No company would do this, particularly not in a recession. It's not the internet, it's not private competition, it's not labor costs, it's not even the recession. It's Congress that's killing the Postal Service with the pre-funding mandate. But guess what? The Postmaster General just announced on, uh, that on August 1st he was not going to make that pre-funding payment. He's not going to make the pre-funding payment on September 30th. He's going to probably stop paying into the, the overfunded, uh, the surplus uh, overfunded pension funds. This is good. Yes. Then he should go about the business of leading the Postal Service. Yeah. Instead, he's killing the Postal Service. He doesn't have to do that. He's not making the pre-funding cuts uh, payments. He shouldn't be closing, which is what he's doing. This summer, he's closing 48 mail processing plants on the way to closing half the mail processing plants in this country, including four in our dearly beloved Oregon. That's where I lived. Uh, and there's 124 rural post offices on the chopping block. I've been on a uh, postal road warrior trip trek through Oregon, talking with people in rural towns that are whose post offices are threatened, and in in the cities of Salem, Eugene, Springfield, Bend, and Pendleton, where their mail processing plants are scheduled for closure. And I can tell you that people are ready to fight for their postal service. People are not going to let this go down. People are going to fight. And I urge you all to consider joining up with one of the communities of Postal Workers United coalitions in your town. There's one in Portland. There's one emerging in Salem. There's one in Eugene, Springfield. There's one coming up in Bend. There should be one in this town. Yeah. Yeah. PCWUnited.com. Look for us. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Jamie.